Hi, this is Les McCarter from Power Up Training, and I will be guiding you from knowing little to nothing about PowerPoint to creating a professional looking slide deck. Together, we'll go from a blank slide to a finished project. While I'll be demonstrating inside the latest Office 365 version of PowerPoint, the concepts apply to an all older versions. Along the way, I'll also be pointing out additional free YouTube training videos by me on specific topics if you want to learn more about them. As a free bonus, we have a downloadable training handout with the matching topics at our website listed here and in the YouTube notes below. It's a handy reference to keep track of what you have learned. Let's go power up and learn PowerPoint. I'm assuming you know how to launch PowerPoint, but if not, see these instructions. And if you want more, look for the link above and in the notes below for our video, The Eight Ways to Start PowerPoint. Do you know them all? Running PowerPoint by way of the menus. Everything can be controlled with the ribbon menu. It is similar to other Microsoft Office tools. So once you learn on PowerPoint or Word or Excel, then you're good to go. Let's get started. I've dropped out of the slideshow mode into the working PowerPoint software program. The ribbon menu is at the top of the screen. PowerPoint has hundreds of action commands organized by menu tabs. As I click the different menu tabs, you're presented with different action commands. The most common ones, which we'll explore together are home, insert, design, transitions, animations, and slideshow, plus file, which looks different from all the other menu tabs as we will explore later. Inside the specific menu tabs, the commands are organized by functional use, such as the text formatting commands are together. To avoid confusion of too many commands, PowerPoint does not show some of the lesser used commands. And instead, these additional commands are revealed when clicking the group down arrow as seen in the font group. Now the dialog box opens and gives us even more action commands for fonts. One last item to point out about the ribbon menu, context aware menus. Once again, so to only show us what is relevant, PowerPoint hides menus when not needed, but they will magically appear when clicking the right object. And when clicking the menu tab, it shows actions related to the selected object. In this case, picture formatting commands. Other commands not issued from the ribbon menu can be done by the mouse or the keyboard. And Power Up Training has detailed tutorial videos on both. But I want to point out the frustration saver trick of the right mouse button. Right click on different objects in PowerPoint and PowerPoint will show only the relevant commands. I'll be demonstrating this throughout the rest of this tutorial. We have one last foundational topic to understand. Views of the presentation. PowerPoint has different view perspectives depending on the phase of our creation process. Let me demonstrate the three most used views of outline, normal, and slide sorter. Here we see PowerPoint in the most common working view, the normal view, where we see the slide thumbnails on the far left and our working canvas area targeting the selected slide from the left thumbnails. And on the bottom, there's a spot for our speaker notes. To change views, click on the view tab in the ribbon menu and choose a view. In our case, the next view is outline. The outline view is where you capture all of your ideas and talking points in the far left box. As you work in the outline, the results for the specific slide shows up on the working canvas. Our last view is a slide sorter view. This will give us a great overview of all of our slides in just one look. So now you know your way around PowerPoint, but I want to share the secret professional way to create a slide deck in seven steps, starting with a blank slide, then adding your ideas, saving the file, applying a design look, customizing the slide, and putting on the finishing touches before giving the presentation. 
If you don't follow these steps, you risk fighting with PowerPoint, and that is where your project could turn ugly. The first important step is to always start with a blank presentation. Amateurs will often get seduced by choosing a colorful theme. Do not always start with a blank presentation and everything will flow nicely as we move through the seven steps. So back in PowerPoint, I will click on the File Menu tab and then select New and click on Blank Presentation, which will give us a new slide deck with just a single empty slide. Moving to Strategic Step 2, Capturing Ideas in Outline Mode. All professional presentations are based on ideas as translated into words. The best way to organize our thoughts and ideas is through the outline view of PowerPoint. So let's go to the View menu and then select Outline. What we type in the top left corner will show up as the first slide title on the right. I'm typing my first presentation. And then I hit the Enter key, which will create our second slide. But I want to add a subtitle for my first slide. This is where the keyboard comes into play. The Tab key indents the line five spaces at each press to the right while a shift key pressed with the tab key will do an out dent, which brings the line back to the left with each press. Multiple out dents, which are shift tabs, will bring the line to the farthest to the left, and once there, it will create a brand new slide. All done with the keyboard, no mouse needed. As I type away, let me emphasize the advantages of the outline mode. It will help you organize your thoughts and ideas which is the foundation of your presentation without distractions of colors and images. Then when the time comes for formatting, PowerPoint understands what you've created and all the future formatting flows smoothly. Amateurs will put text boxes all around in a haphazard fashion, and they then become puzzled why their presentations look a mess. Always start in outline mode. Let me speed up the creation process. I already have the text of our presentation in my clipboard, so I'm going to go ahead and paste it into the outline and instantly have our full presentation. You will be on your own to create all the presentation text. Before we go too far, we need to save our work. And in fact, once we started creating the outline, that would have been a better time. But let's go ahead and see how to do it now. Until you save the presentation, the first time, the project will have a generic name. So with the save, you'll be given the opportunity to name it and put it into a file folder that you can best organize your work projects in. So let's go to the file menu. So in the file menu, I'm going to click on save. And when I click on the save, it's going to give me a variety of places to store it in. I'm currently working in my Microsoft OneDrive folder. I'm going to go ahead and choose a recent folder that I've been using. In there, I can give it a brand new name. So I'm going to create a new folder before I name it. I'm going to call this our class demo folder. And once then, I'm going to click on OK. And within there, I need to go into the folder. So I'll double click on it. And up here, I'll give it our presentation name. I'm going to name it my first presentation, and then I can hit the enter key or the save button. On saving, let me point out a subtle item. If you elect to save on Microsoft OneDrive, PowerPoint automatically turns on autosave and will save as you go along without you ever having to think about it again. If you store it elsewhere, like on your local PC, you will need to remember to click the save disk from time to time. Step four, apply a design look. Now we're ready for instant gratification. Using the power of PowerPoint graphic design expertise to jazz up our slide deck. This will add color, backgrounds, fonts, and layouts of our liking. Let's see this in action. We are working in our standard normal view. I have our first slide selected. I'm going to go to the design on the menu. And here we have a variety of choices. 
In the design menu, all I need to do is hover my mouse over the little thumbnail and we get a preview of what it's going to look like, taking our existing outline and turning it into a presentation ready look. But in this mode, the hovering over the theme only gives me a view of my first slide. I want to see how it impacts the whole presentation. So let's change our view by clicking on view and going to slide sorter so that we can see everything on our screen. Now we'll go back to the design view and this time we can't hover. We need to click, but when we click, we'll see that it applies the design to the whole presentation and we can see the impact. As we go through this, note that different design themes lays out the title, maybe on the top, maybe on the bottom, maybe in the middle, it changes the background. So you have to study how it impacts not only the main slides, but also the title slide to find one that matches your creative vision. You may recognize these designs from presentations you've seen. So if you want to stand out from the crowd, you want to go over to the variant section and you could change, for example, a new color scheme that no one else has used before. You could also choose a different font family if you want to stand out. With that said, though, I highly recommend that you neither change the color or the fonts, but instead you focus on something called the variants. These are designed changes that includes the font, the color and the backgrounds. So that way you have a professional collection of design choices that work together. So we've applied an overall design theme to all of our slides, but each slide may have a different purpose and we can enhance the individual slides one by one to help illustrate our ideas. So this takes us to step five of seven where we work on each slide. There are many ways to add elements to the slide. And of course, we have an additional training video on this topic. But for now, I'm going to show you two techniques. The first is the design ideas trick that Microsoft added to PowerPoint 2013 and has continued to enhance with each new version. I'm showing the latest, so your older versions may not have all these tricks, but it will be close. Let's work with our step one slide. It's important that we're in standard view and that we have a slide selected. Once selected, we can then go to the design menu and over on the far corner, there's something called design ideas. Click on that and up pops up some design ideas for us to choose from. These are various designs that Microsoft has created for us. Note that as we click on them, it's changing only the slide that is selected, not all the slides. Also, look how clever this is. Look how it recognized some of the keywords and tried to find matching icons to go with it. That's pretty magical. But just because it is magical, it does not always mean it matches. Always, always make sure your image and graphics add value. Don't be cutesy. Let's choose a different design and see if we can customize it to meet our needs. The emphasis of this slide is not the different steps, but the goal is to choose a blank presentation every time. So let's fix that by adding an image. This design idea of a photo of blueprints also doesn't match our idea. However, we can change that photo to find something that's more appropriate. I'm going to click on the photo and then introduce an idea that I brought up earlier, and that is the right mouse button that brings up a context sensitive menu that gives the ability to change the picture. This concept of the right mouse click on an object is important. The context menu is relevant to the object. You can search the ribbon menu for the same command, but where? it's easier to just right click and see the relevant commands. So here, let's work with change picture and from stock images. Stock images, found only in the more recent versions of PowerPoint, is a collection of photos that you're free to use. You can browse the list, but I find a better way is to put in a keyword and search. You may need to try several different creative ideas. Because I'm emphasizing starting with a blank slide, I will search for empty. 
those empty picture frames seems to do the trick. I'll click on insert and see what just happened. Not only did it replace the blueprint photo, but it also cropped it so it fit perfectly in our slide. I love this look. There may be times where you cannot find a design idea that you like, or you're running an older version of PowerPoint, or you want complete control of the canvas. In all of these cases, you want to use slide layouts. What are layouts? Each slide has a layout assigned to it, one and only one layout. The layout will control how the various objects, such as a title or a bullet point, or the images are placed on the slide. Different layouts will look differently, but still maintain the same theme of colors, fonts, and backgrounds. Here are some examples of the various layouts that are usually standard types associated with a theme. I've highlighted the four most common themes with the star. In fact, your default theme will start with a title slide, and then all the others by default will be title and content, which we see here. So our next tutorial demo will show how to change a slide layout to a different type. We'll go from title and content to two contents. Back on our canvas, I am right-clicking on a thumbnail to get my context-aware menu and selecting layout. See that the title and content is highlighted with a gray border indicating that this is our current layout, but I want to change this to two contents, so I'll click on it. The slide has been converted pushing all of our text bullet lines to the left content box and creating a new empty content box, just waiting for us to add something. What can we add? Let's take a look at the shadow like suggestions. Note that the suggested icons will not show up in your presentation, but just give us something to click. Now let's see them up close. Those shadowy icons are shortcut action items that can be clicked to add tables, graphs, images, and more. You can add all of these from the ribbon menu, but this saves you from searching where they are. Note that text is not a choice. For that, you just click inside the box and start typing. For my outline step two slide, I want to add a picture from my local computer, not a stock image. So I will click on the bottom left action symbol to get launched into a file explorer window where I can find my photo on my computer. I know I have a JPEG image of an outline that I use in another tutorial dedicated to creating compelling outlines, and I can reuse it here. Unlike the design idea mode we use to insert an image, I now have to click and drag it to a new location and also click and drag the photo borders to make it larger. Using the design ideas from the recent versions of PowerPoint is nice, but this method of using a two content slide layout gives me full artistic control of the size and placement of my images. Let's run through the same process of changing the layout to a two content layout. And this time I will add in an icon for the name and save slide. This is similar to stock images that we saw earlier. I will search for an image of a folder. Once I find what I like, I will then click insert and then size and position it. Now we have a image that matches the content of our specific slide. And one last time, but with an alternate method, all done via the ribbon menu. I will go to the insert menu in the ribbon menu and then choose the picture action icon. From there, we'll go to stock images. I'll then search for an appropriate image to match the slide about presenting your PowerPoint presentation. I'll insert it, then resize it and position it to help drive home our slide topic. The next slide has nothing to do with our My First Presentation slide deck, but I want to demo how you can add a variety of other objects like tables or videos. But in this example, we'll add a chart. 
First, we need to create a new slide. At the beginning of the tutorial, we created each slide by way of the outline, but you can also right click on a thumbnail and choose new slide and it will create one right underneath duplicating the layout, but empty waiting for content. Let's give it a name of sample chart and then click on the chart content shadow action icon. There are a variety of charts to choose from pop up. Power Up Training has a video dedicated just to charts and graphs, but we just want to demo this, so we'll click on one sample. The goal of charts and graphs is to visually represent the relationship of numbers in an easy to understand graphic. Since we're dealing with numbers, up pops an automatic table for us to enter the data, and it comes pre populated to better understand how to interact with the chart and the numbers. Here are two pro tips. Don't fill up your slide with text. Sometimes less words can make a bigger impact. As we've already demoed, you can just add a simple image to complement the point. Each slide should have a single goal. But sometimes you just need to have lots of text on one slide. There's no getting around it. In that case, change the layout to two contents and then split the text between the two text boxes as seen here. Before we finish step five of customizing individual slides, we must examine formatting text and bullet lines. The key here is to select the slide, then go to the ribbon menu tab of home. Once there, select your text and you have a wealth of formatting choices. Let's do this. We are already on the home menu, so I'm now going to go ahead and select some text that we want to format. So I'll take the mouse, click, hold down the left mouse button and drag across. Now we can go up there and take a look at the various choices. Let's change the bullet type from the bullet looking to squares. It applies to what is highlighted. We can actually go in there and actually click on the number to change it to number and then go back to bullets. Is that simple and is that easy to choose different types? Now let's change the format of just two words. You highlight the words and then you can go up and you can say underline or bold. And once again, you can toggle that on and off by clicking it back again. We can also change the font look. We can change the color. So everything can be done within these menus once you're on the home menu and you select the text up front. We have now customized each slide to help illustrate our ideas. And now we're ready to put the finishing touches to add some extra class. But being careful not to go overboard. Step six is broken down into two parts. The first part is about adding a transition between each slide so as not to jolt our audience when in the presentation there's an abrupt change from slide to slide. We want to smooth the change with a slide transition. Let's go do it. It is best if we leave the normal view as we're no longer working on the individual slides and we want to see all of our slides. So click on view and slide sorter. Next, we'll move to the ribbon menu tab and select transitions. We also need to select a slide. We'll practice with the first slide, but later apply the results to all of our slides. Then we can select any of the presented styles and see it change on the screen. For older software versions, you may need to use the slideshow to preview the results, and I'll show that in a few moments. Let's try out random bars and watch the first slide. Next, we'll try shape and see the circular change. There are tons of choices and some of them are wild. The wild ones might seem like a good idea late at night, but trust me, it's an amateur mistake, such as the use of origami. So for professional presentations, keep with the subtle and to help know what is subtle. PowerPoint has a drop down menu arrow to show all the choices and has organized them by subtle, exciting and dynamic content. Remember, 
Keep it classy, not showy. Fade is my go-to classic choice. And to apply it to all slides, click the choice and then look to the right for apply to all. And to know that a transition has been applied, look for the small action arrow icon just below each slide. Okay, let's test this out by doing a quick launch of the slideshow with the tiny slideshow icon on the top left corner. One click and it starts from the beginning. You are now seeing the transitions between our first three slides. Note on YouTube or even your video conferencing like Zoom, the transitions are not as elegant due to the internet video transmission latency, but you should get the idea here and be aware of that if you're planning to do online presentations. Now for the second part of step six, slide animation. Unlike slide transitions that impact the change between slides, animation adds transition actions inside the slide such as having individual bullet points appear one at a time. Before I go too far, I must point out that you should avoid these changes until you become comfortable presenting in front of a crowd. Remembering to advance each line and still present is tricky and can be embarrassing if you forget to go to the next animated item. So best to skip this trick. Still, let me show you quickly how it's done. From the ribbon menu tab, select animations. And since we're now back to editing individual slides, we need to choose a slide in normal view. Here's a pro trick. When the slideshow view is showing, just double click on the slide you want to work on. And you then slip into the normal view with the canvas area ready for you to work on. We are going to animate these talking bullet points on our step two slide. So first, you need to select the text box you want to animate. Just click once inside. You will know it is selected when you see the faint dotted line rectangle around the text box. Like transitions, you have a gallery of animated choices at the top of the screen. I will choose flying, even though I would not use it in a professional setting, but it's a good training demo. Immediately, you see an animated preview of the bullet points flying in from the bottom. And when done, it shows numbers next to each line. The number represents the order of the object's appearance with each click of the mouse in the presentation mode, as shown here. On to the last step, presenting on stage. I've already previewed how to launch the presentation from the shortcut at the top of the screen, but there's much more to see if you go into the slideshow menu from the ribbon menu. At a high level, the slideshow choice in PowerPoint lets you present the slides in full screen. And if your computer is connected to a second display unit, like a big screen TV or a projector system, then it will push the full screen slides to the bigger monitors. PowerPoint then switches into dual monitor mode with the presentation on the big screen and a smaller different presenter view on your local computer or laptop to control the slideshow presentation. But a quick side trip. When making a presentation, it's nice to have talking points to keep you on point. You can add them in the normal view at the bottom of the canvas. I'm adding notes here and we'll see them in our presenter view in just a moment. So I'm on the slideshow ribbon menu tab and clicking from the beginning icon, the slideshow kicks into full screen. But on my laptop screen, I see a different screen, the presenter view, where I can control all of my presentation. Here's a great cheat sheet to explain the different parts of the presenter view. Remember to look at the bottom of our YouTube presentation to get a link to the website where we have free training guide downloads, including this handout. The top left corner shows what is currently displayed on the big screen. The top right corner gives us a preview of what will show up next. Just below that are the speaker notes, which I just created a few moments ago. And at the bottom are the controls to advance the slides forwards and back. There are some hot buttons you can also click on the screen to advance, such as the preview screen.
and there are always ways to advance your presentation with the keyboard and mouse. The advanced arrows will move you to the next slide unless you have animated bullet points, and then the preview window will show each animated bullet point as you click as a preview. See, as it's going on the screen, click, 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 click. And when you're done, just click the end slideshow menu item at the top of the screen or hit the escape key on your keyboard. And there you go, just at the half hour mark. You've seen how to create a professional PowerPoint presentation using our proven seven step strategy. These are the slides we created in our training session and they could be polished up just a bit, but we're really close. Follow these steps in order and you'll be ready to succeed with PowerPoint. Do go to our website. The link is below on our YouTube notes where you'll find more training choices and the matching training handout for free. Also, I've listed the additional classes that go into more depth on many of these PowerPoint topics. Please like this video if it was helpful and do subscribe to our YouTube channel as it helps us make more free training for you. Until then, go power up.